G'day, this video is going to show you how to do the data on top of your drifting footage. I use a program called RaceRender. It's here at racerender.com. I'm doing mine on Mac. Uh, you don't need an ECU with login capability to be able to do this. You can use Track Addict, which is the software that they provide for your smartphone, for um, Apple and Android. And you can use that to get the data off GPS off the phone or from the OBD2 port. But because I have an ECU with data logging, I can just go straight to my ECU software and I can download the data. So this is some data from the last run that I did at Malala practice day and I'm just going to sync that up to this video. So this is my, my 360 camera and the 360 camera is so cool because I can see anything. I can look at myself, I can look at what's happening inside the car, I can look anywhere and also tilt the camera, change the field of view, and also change the distance away from the camera. So this is the video that I've chosen as the last run from the day. I won't show you all of it, so simply uh, I've chosen the video and I've exported that to get ready to import into Race Render. So before I do that, back to my ECU data. And so you can see here this is the last run of the day. I, I know that because this is my intake air temp and it usually only goes up during a run. So I've got one run there, one here, and one at the end. So I'm just going to select that peak. So what I do from this point here is I export the log file as a CSV. So current zoom file time, done it already, there it is, thank you. Now I have both the video and the data, I can go into race render and open a new simple data overlay where I can add the data file, CSV, and then also the video. And this is where you can choose the template for the overlay. Uh, you can make your own, but sometimes it's easy just to start with one that they've given you. So I'll start with one, a simple one, transparent. Okay, I'll just move myself out of the way. So now I've got both the data and the video. I'll play it, and of course it's going to be out of time, out of sync. Yep, so we need to sync it now. So we'll go side by side. And this is where you can choose what data to sync with the video. So I know that when I take off on my run, about here, the car accelerates. And I look at the graph on the left, and I can see that that's where the car accelerates. So I'll put it roughly there. Let's see how it looks. Pretty good. But to get it perfect, we can do a synchronization tool. And the good thing about my car is that I've got the dash, which has the gear, and down here you can see has the gear as well. So what I'll do is just go back until I can see when it goes into third gear on the dash. Just there. Two, three. And now I'm going to synchronize that with the gauge down the bottom here so that it can change the three at the same time. So two. Great. Okay, so now it should be perfectly in sync with the data. Yep, that's pretty good. So you can see there's a few things missing down the bottom here, and that's because I haven't told it where to look. So down the right-hand side here shows all of the data that this overlay is allowing. So double click on the throttle, it says it's hidden, so let's make it visible. And the input I want to actually use 
TP main, uh, throttle appears. Uh, speedometer, same thing, visible. And let's choose non driven wheel speed, so that's my front wheels. So now the speedo appears. Let's see how that looks. See how fast we get down the straight. Hundred and fifty ish, not that quick. <laughs> Alright, so I'm just gonna tinker with this for a little bit and I'll show you the the final product of what I think is pretty cool with all these features. Any questions let me know in the bottom. Hopefully I've explained it well enough. Uh, the documentation in the app is pretty good. And I know a lot of details about the Link ECU, so if you want to ask specific questions about that, I can answer. And hopefully you get it done too. Cheers. See ya.